Cool. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of iMeet. Today I'm meeting actuarial public speaker Carlo Lahura. Many actuaries are a little shy, but Carlo likes to talk about various self-improvement themes, including productivity, public speaking and motivation. Welcome to my channel, Carlo. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. Really excited to, to be here. And that, that's funny just hearing about the Carlo loves speaking, because, yeah, I can really go on and on sometimes on the floor. <laughs> well, please do, because everyone would love to hear what you have to say. So, you know, perhaps you could start off by introducing yourself to my viewers. Yeah, for sure. So, hello, everyone. My name is Carlo. Uh, I work currently in New York on the non-life side as an actuarial consultant. Um, I've been working with um, EY for the last four years um, in the US. Before that, I graduated from the University of Waterloo in Canada. And I guess more relevant to uh, the theme of this video, and um, I am among one of the uh, youngest to obtain the fellowship credential with the uh, non-life body in North America, the Casualty Actoral Society at age 24. So after that, now I am still going for an existential crisis on of just what happens after exams and and getting some good, getting some really good career advice as well too from Paul here with his video. So excellent, thank you very much, and yeah, well done on your exam history. It's fantastic to get the uh, fellowship so quickly. I wonder maybe you could tell us a little bit about what helped you to do that. Yeah, for sure. So <clears throat> I would say the biggest. The biggest item that helped me for getting the credential was definitely discipline. And <clears throat> what I mean by that is during studying, um, I think there's a lot of there's there's a lot of advice you get right on what uh, how how you should study, what a work life balance should be like during studying. Um, I think for myself in regards to discipline, I really was not afraid to go against societal norms and what a normal uh, life should look like while you're studying. I was really ready to just put in every hour possible into exams while still maintaining my own self um, healthy routine in order to help just still remain sane during the process. And I think for, for the discipline side, um, it really means for me, it really meant just going weeks with just studying and working and sometimes a lot of times uh, in the month or two leading up to the exams was just studying 10 to 14 hour days without uh, hardly any breaks because in the end for myself uh, the way I approach exams is that I really needed to think about how bad do I want it and then from there what am I willing to sacrifice to get that far and then from there once I have the vision that really strong vision set in place, then I would have to think, be reflective myself, okay, think about what are my limits, what have been my limits in the past, and then from that be cognizant that I feel usually for uh, for, for us uh, people in general, we can usually underestimate just how far we can actually go once we find a good enough reason and, and, a, and a why in regards to what we want to get that far. So um, I think once I had all those three components there, I was really able to take it to the next level, to just go on weeks without uh, weeks without the usual social events, whatnot. Because in the end for the exams, I think a good amount of what decides if you pass or fail is will really just be, look, if 40% of people pass the exam, were you among the top 40% of people who studied the most for the exam? Usually, assuming the quality of hours are, are the same across and across everyone. And then from there, it's OK, I need to study the hours. How do I do it? Let's talk about discipline. Let's not be afraid to just disappear off the face of the world for a few weeks and get the exams knocked out as fast as you can. So then you can enjoy the later the later years of your life without exams. Like for myself, I was done at age 24. And ever since then, well, COVID hit the, the year after. so. I can't say I'm living my best years right now, but um, I do know now now that things are seeming to look better. Um, I, I know it, the discipline, the hard discipline that I instilled in myself back then, it was definitely worth the effort. Fantastic. And yeah, it's really great to hear, hear your passion there. Although mentioning your, your later life in your sort of mid-twenties is a bit concerning for someone of my age, but you know, I, oh. I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, sorry, it's mid-twenties, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 
what what about the other the other side of it? So you know, what what's a sort of common pitfall of of studying for you? Yeah, I would say what I've seen I usually happen, and even for myself as well too. At the beginning, is <clears throat> as I said uh, one of the most common pitfalls for studying is um, not challenging the system and taking ownership of your own learning. And I think that's something that's really, really important because, and I, I, I would just remember when I was starting out studying for exams, I would be told that, look, you have to read the source materials and you have to read the entire manual cover to cover three times. And then you have to be uh, watching all the videos and then YouTube and then uh, doing the practice questions and the past exam questions. I got so much information that literally, even up till now, and uh, the first exam I took is still the exam that I studied the most for versus all the other much harder exams. Why? Because I did a really inefficient way of studying the first one because you don't know what you're doing, right? You need some um, assaturates, right? You need a past experience in order to better help help project like what, what's the better way, right? So from there, um, I think it's really important. It was really important for myself after the first exam to reflect back and think and look, OK, what worked, what didn't, how much value did 20 hours of reading the source materials have on me versus 20 hours of just doing the practice questions versus 20 hours of doing something else. And then from there and almost adopting the 80-20 the rule, right? You have to identify what 20% of your overall hours studying is bringing 80% of the results and then doubling down on that 20%. Um, and for myself, that really meant in the end for the non-life <clears throat> exams in, in North America is almost avoiding the source materials altogether because I found in the, for the actual exams, I'm not being tested as much on how well did you read the source materials, but it's more of how well did you answer these questions. So I thought, okay, why am I reading the source material when I can just do the questions, which are actually going to be directly, those are word sentence for sentence going to be tested on. And yeah, that's where I really took for a lot of my exams. I, if I were to start an exam, if I were to start an exam right now, I would just be doing the past exam questions the whole way, the entire time. It's, I might start out knowing not much, but eventually I found that the more you do them, the more you're able to identify patterns in regards to what they're actually asking. And then from there, once you have a good idea of just what type of questions they're asking, that's when you can go back and read the source material or the textbook if you want to with a, with a newer pair, pair of lens on you because you know exactly what you sh what's important in source materials and what's not. Um, with that being said, I do not, I, I do not discouraged disregarding the source materials altogether, even in the textbook. Some people are great with that, but for myself, uh, I, I didn't find that to be as, as helpful for me. So I, and I figured that out only from challenging the system and taking ownership of my own learning and thinking back to myself, what's working best for me, what's not, and not being afraid to go against that. Um, I think that can be a really applicable and uh, advice as well too for your career. That's usually where innovation is born in regards to not being afraid to challenge how what the prior models the company might have done or the prior strategies in regards to managing or, or pricing the risk but taking taking a step back seeing how things have been done understanding the current environment that you're in and then just con constructing the best calculating the best uh risk adjusted decision going forward and going with that and i would say that's something that was really applicable to me for the exams and, and something that was really very key to uh me having gone through them at my pace excellent that's really wise words thank you thank you carlo yeah i mean i i can a lot of that resonates with me you need to find the right way to study for you and it, and it will be different for for different people but understanding what you're going to be tested on is a real key part of that that study skills so you, you mentioned um working really hard and you know a lot of people have good intentions and start out wanting to do that but sort of lack motivation so I, I wonder how you maintain your high motivation levels while studying yeah thanks Juan that's a and I really like this um this question in particular because uh all the questions are like <laughs> <laughs> I love just saying that you know like you really like those questions like oh yeah it's not <laughs> but all the questions uh in regards to this one in regards to motivation and um, I really like it because motivation is something that I 
I've really been almost becomes obsessed with ever since um, university in regards to just how how we can actually leverage that in order to push yourself forward. Um, <clears throat> for myself, I can think back on my hardest days of studying were definitely when I when I was uh, doubling up for and taking two exams at once and uh, there came for the I, I did that three times um, for three spring three spring sentence in a row for just doubling up two exams at once. Um, first doubling up was successful. The second one, I failed both exams, which really sucked. And then the third one, uh, which was the last sitting I sat for, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go for it. And that was 550 hours of studying that I had to that I studied um, in addition to busy season consultant hours in the US. And I only started studying uh, four months before the exam. So it's kind of like four months to study 550 hours. And I'm also working long business season consulting hours. How do you do it, right? That's when I really had to think back on motivation and just what it means. And that's when I figured, and that's when it became clear to me, motivation, it can usually be tied back to thinking, to thinking and, and really reflecting hard on why are you doing what you're doing? And in regards to studying, this has to go much deeper than just you wanted to pass the exam. This, this has to go on. Why? Why is it so important for you to pass the exam? Is it? Are you doing it for for someone? Is, is there is there is there a promise you made to someone in the past that that's making you want to do that? And for example, for myself, uh, my family, we come from Peru. We immigrated um, to Canada when I was seven years old, and throughout my childhood, I saw my my parents go for some really monumental life challenges um, in Canada for us as a family because we had no one. We were in Canada alone. Uh, we didn't have much money. So it's literally paycheck to paycheck living um, for a good number of years. And, and just experiencing all that financial stress as a seven, as a 10 year old during that early on, that really made an impact on me and seeing my parents go through all that um, solely because my parents wanted to give a better opportunity at life for children, myself and my sister thinking hard back on that during university and even during exams, no matter how hard things got, no matter how tired I would be after working businesses in hours and still thinking that I need to put in 550 hours in total, I would just think back on my why. And that was my parents, my family. I'm doing this because my parents went through so much in order to give me and my sister a better shot at life in, in a first world country with a first world uh, education and so many opportunities in in just a first world country that I would definitely have had nowhere near close to that in Peru that I'm not going to let this go to waste no matter how painful the hours of studying got no matter how how bored I might have gotten no matter how just an endless routine that the studying process might have gotten I was not going to give up on my parents and when you have, and I really think that's important, when you identify that why and why you're doing it, it might, it might be for your parents, it might be for a, a sibling, a younger sibling that you, that you want to be a role model for, it might be for an aunt or uncle that you, uh, that, that you made a promise to. The stronger that why is, the still it'll still be hard, but it will, it will get easier, e easier enough to just get back on the grind and keep pushing forward and Honestly, in the end, it'll really help uh, keep you grounded to the process because in the end, um, and this is one thing I really like to think back on motivation, pain in itself is just temporary in itself. No matter how hard the studying process might get, it's usually just temporary. But if you quit, that's going to last forever. Until the next sitting, maybe. But, <laughs> but but the fact that, that the choice was made, that lasts forever. And I, I, I did not want that, um, especially if that combined with the having that why of my parents and and just be willing to go the extra mile then and just and just hanging on to it um i think that's something i think that that would be my 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 best advice i would have for a uh, for motivation really think back on why you're doing it and don't be afraid to uh, to go against the social norms with that um it's just the last thing I would like to add on to that, which uh, was really was really great takeaway. I really love this from the book uh, A Man's Search for Meaning by um, uh, Victor Frank, I think. Um, a Man's Search for Meaning. And they, they identified that when it comes to sacrifices or whatnot, it's easier to go through them 
when there's meaning in the sacrifice. When the end has a meaning, the sorry, when the end is forfeit enough, then the sacrifice has a meaning, and that's when it gets easier um, to to push all the way through for the end of that. Wow, that was a really fantastic answer. I can really, I can really hear your passion and you know the the struggle that your parents uh, went through to to make life better for you. I mean, you know, I, I didn't. Some people, you know, don't don't have that, and it's fantastic that you know you've you've taken that as a as a strength and a, and as a, a driver for you. So that's that's fantastic to hear, Carlo. Well done. Thank uh, you. I've I've really you know, really loved hearing uh, hearing you talk. I wonder if anyone else you know feels like me wants to hear more and connect more with you. How, you know, how can they do that to to learn more? What can they do? Yeah, for sure. They can definitely. I highly encourage them to just reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I, I actually I have six. I have six articles on there with, uh, for other, for the 24 studying strategies I specifically used for my exams. I touched upon a good number of the concepts I outlined in those articles in this in this video. Um, to go into all of them, that would, that would be a good, good amount of chunk of time. But if you want more details on that, definitely feel free to check them out on there. And um, even if you want to just stop by and say hi, I really, really love meeting people and just Feel free to just uh, drop me a message on LinkedIn. I, I'd be bored and happy to reply on there, even just saying hi. Um, I really love getting those messages and I just find it to be so fun just meeting other people from around the world. Brilliant. Well, it's been really nice for me meeting you, Carlo. You know, thank you very much for, for coming on my channel, opening up about, about your history and uh, sharing your exam tips with everyone. So, you know, I really appreciate that. And, you know, thanks to everyone who's been listening in you know i hope you found this video helpful and, and please do reach out to carlo if, if you uh, need some help or want to say hello and just you know connect in with him so you know thank you very much again carlo um and thanks to everyone goodbye thank you bye